We will talk very quickly about Twin Stick Shooters to help Draken out, and then we'll wrap things up for this week's show. So I guess, Draken, I'm going to ask you, uh, what are some of your questions about Twin Stick Shooting Design? And while I wait for your response, I'm going to drink as many uh, amounts of my drink as I have next to me. Like I said, I need a mini bar next to me. So, um, what do you mean by enemies? You're talking about, like, designing them, the difficulty... Because uh, Twin Six Shooters have had a lot in terms of enemy design. How you create interesting enemy designs. Oh, man, I wish I could... I'm trying to get... I think this is the problem where I wear, when I wear light shirts. It uh, messes with the uh, lighting on my camera. How do you create interesting enemy designs for a twin stick shooter? Well, I think part of it is exactly uh, what kind of, uh, I guess, attacks you want in your game. Some games like uh, Smash TV or Robotron just deal with uh, melee-based enemies. They run into you, they hurt you, you die kind of thing. But we also see enemies... Oh boy. But we are seeing more modern twin six shooters like Crimson Head, uh, Tesla vs. Lovecraft, and stuff like that give enemies range attacks. Another thing I think you should also pay attention to is what kind of defensive options you have. Because I've seen games give players, they'll give like a defensive roll or a smart bomb attack and kind of allow you to use that as a way to get around these enemies. Because it doesn't matter how interesting the enemies are if the player doesn't have the means to deal with it. For instance, if you make every enemy be five times the speed of the player and they have no other way to get around it, that player is going to die every single time. There's not much they can do for it. But if you give the player, let's say, the ability to teleport or dodge roll or even set up decoys, that can be used to mess with the enemies and then you can also... Uh, build on that in terms of the enemy's design. So, um, uh, going back to the decoy point, let's say my decoy works on all blue enemies, but I could have red enemies who are, will not uh, be fooled by that decoy. So now I have to think about how do I deal with those enemies? Now, I think another thing when you're getting into enemy design like that, and, and this could even be a... Uh, greater topic on enemy design in general is that it's important to make them distinctive because you don't want to have five enemies that have vastly different abilities but they all look exactly the same because you need the player to be able to at a moment's notice break down okay we have three of these fast enemies two of these heavy enemies I got a cough <coughs> sorry about that but uh, this was one of the problems I had with something like from Batman Arkham Knight and how all the drone enemies have the same paint scheme and almost the same general foundation. It got to the point that I wasn't sure which enemies I could easily kill and which ones I had to focus on. And when it gets to that, it becomes more annoying, especially if the enemies are built on hard counters. We see this in a lot of games where... <coughs> Man, voice is starting to die on me here. Where if the green enemy is immune to all green shots, or and then the red enemy is only immune is immune to red shots, and so on and so forth. If the enemies all look alike, then how is the player supposed to know immediately what tactic I should use against them? You know, if you have a dark blue enemy and then a slighter light blue enemy and they both share or they both have different weaknesses that's going to confuse the player on that regard and with something like a twin stick shooter when it's all about player feedback or I'm sorry game feedback you don't want the player to be confused at all you just want them to kind of go into that zen state of knowing okay all these enemies over here are lizards and I need them and they're only weak to this so I'm going to use this attack, but then these enemies are going to be strong to those attacks. Let me switch gears. And it's about getting to that state of flow 
as a ju everything just melts away and you're just fighting these enemies. Another good example would be something like uh, Geometry Wars, that every enemy was visibly distinctive and also had its own unique attack pattern. So like some enemies may immediately home in on the player, some enemies may like break off and like scatter into smaller enemies that you have to kill, some of them may try and shoot lasers at you, but each one was distinct enough so that the player knows immediately, okay, if I see a spinning blade enemy, he's going to do X. If I see the blue triangle enemy, he's going to do Y. And I'm trying to think of some other examples. Some games will have like their own persistent layer of, you know, player upgrades and stuff like that. We saw this with Tesla versus Lovecraft. And that can certainly help. You also have to be aware of just how much the game is going to require that. That if you don't have, you know, the high enough level for it, you're kind of screwed. Let me see here. I am so sorry about things being so dark on the screen right now. It doesn't look too bad on the stream wise. Well, Geometry Wars <laughs> is going to be a bit tricky. Is it even available on Steam now? I think the second one is. If you want to see it, uh, <laughs> uh, Draken, I did do a full play of Tesla vs. Lovecraft. If you search for that on the channel. Oh, the original Geometry Wars is available. The third game is available, but not the second game that I liked so much. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, Geometry Wars 2, that's the best one, and it's not available on PC, unfortunately. Hmm. Eh, let's see. Yep, exactly. It's a plan years in the making. But yeah, Tesla vs. Lovecraft was good. Um, I just posted the Crimson Land piece uh, two days ago, I think, from the time of the stream. Uh, Neon Chrome I never played. Uh, let's see. But yeah, uh, the studio 10 Tons, they're the makers of Crimson Land and all that. They're probably a good place to start if you want inspiration. I'm trying to see if there's anything else going on. <laughs> but uh, with twin stick shooting, yeah, it's definitely... You really need to get very interesting with the enemy designs, but you also want to get a good feel for the weapons. And feel is going to be built on how the weapons behave, their sound effects, stuff like that. I'm trying to think if anyone has really done like a highly elevated take on twin stick shooting. The only one I can really think of would be... Hmm, maybe something like Tesla vs. Lovecraft or even Geometry Wars. It's a very hard genre, I feel, to go like high-end on. Like a uh, contrast to something like a platformer or a stealth game or a roguelike where you can really get creative with the mechanics. Hmm. Maybe even something like a uh, game like Smash TV or Total Carnage back in the day. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, the thing about the twin sex shooters is that they tend to appear... <laughs> yeah, that's true. That they kind of appear and disappear. I think Crimson Land is the only one that's kind of like stuck around in terms of being recognized. And that's four years old at this point. Hmm. Oh, here's one I play. Nation Red. Another thing that they call them are arena-based shooters. Next Mechania. I'm pretty sure I heard of that one. I think I asked them for a press key and I never got it too. 
I think a uh, house marquee they did a piece on that oop, uh, uh, on that polygon piece we mentioned earlier. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> and that's it, and that's always that point that you'll see people who find these games and go, I never heard of this game before, but it's so amazing. But I think with that, unless they want to say any quick questions, I think we'll wrap it up for this week because my voice is starting to go. And I have to actually record some uh, spotlight videos too. Let me see here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm confusing people that I emailed. Hmm? And you never know, unfortunately. <laughs> but I think with that, let's uh, wrap things up for this week. I'm trying to just check my emails. See if anything big happened there. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no problem. And if your game does become a if it, if your game does become the next Fortnite Dragon, I hope that <laughs> I hope that you'll uh, give me some residuals on that Fortnite Battle Royale. There, oh, put Bowser in your game. I'm sure that that could help as well. She could be the main character. <laughs> but with that said, we're going to wrap up for this week's uh, Game Wisdom Live. So thank you for everyone watching this live or recorded. If you would like... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> if you'd like to watch this ad free and early, be sure to check out patreon.com slash GWBicer for the VIP version. I'll be back tonight for... I'm sure it'll be Deep, <laughs> Deep Sky Derelicts. But we'll see what else comes out. Maybe we'll do some other games. And I'll be back next week, hopefully, with Rob... Uh, for our next discussion. But I'll see you guys throughout the week and for more discussions here and on Game Wisdom, where we send the art and science of games. Until next time, have a good week.